So I think there's nearly as many videos on restoring Stanley number fours and number fives and metal hand planes as there are channels on YouTube. They're everywhere. Everyone seems to have, uh, have done one. But there's not very much information on wooden hand planes. So that's what we're doing today. I've got two amazing wooden hand planes, a woodcock and a marples that belong to my other half's great grandfather. He was a clockmaker, cabinet maker, and they've been handed to me to use. So here they are, these are the two hand planes. Um, very quickly, they're in ace condition. I don't need to kind of check them over, but I'll show you what I look for in a good hand plane. If you want to buy one, if you've got one to restore, things to look out for. So quick backstory on these. These belonged to my other half's great grandfather. They were given to me by her cousin. I did get a load of other tools. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know I restore old windows, old doors, period properties. And I've been looking for a couple of good hand planes. Now this one, the Marples, is actually going to become an EDC hand plane. It fits great in the back of a sustainer. It's a lot lighter than a metal number four, which I can keep here in the workshop. I haven't used them, I haven't done anything with them. So hopefully these two will not just be a pretty backdrop for the studio. Okay, so the first thing I'm looking at is right on the toe here. There aren't any major cracks or anything like that. There's no checking in the in the timber. Same on the back, there is a maker's mark. I don't know if you can actually see that. So this is a Marples. I think this is actually from maybe the 1950s, as late as the 1950s, um, because it's got this sticker on the back. I'm not like a tall nerd. If I'm perfectly honest, I don't care how old it is. The history's in the hand plane already, and that's all that's important. Um, the sole is in really good condition. There is a little bit of streaking down the middle where it's been used, probably on edge and there's a few dents and a few scratches. Certainly nothing um, to write home about. There's a bit of uh, bit of damage to this corner on the heel where I suspect it's been dropped and the, um, the fibers feathered out. That's no problem at all. We can sort that in, an, in a heartbeat. The handle is good and tight and the iron is in good condition. I take the wedge out, I can see straight away this discoloration on here where it's been fitted in the throat and the light's not got to this section where it's been thing. The timber is the same timber, it's about the same discoloration on the top so I'm pretty confident um, this is, well I know this is the original wedge because it won't have been changed, um, but if you're buying one from a car boot sale or something, an antique shop or something like that, um, you never quite know. I suspect there used to be a little marble sticker on the top of the wedge here as well. Uh, the fingers on the bottom of the wedge are in good condition. We want those all as long as possible all the way to the bottom. Don't want them broken off because they're going to hold the bottom of the iron into the, um, the mouth and the throat and, and stop it from chattering when we're using it. So these do need to be long. Uh, a little bit of feathering on the end, probably where it's been hammered home and it's just protruded at one point outside the, um, the mouth and been used. But that's no drama at all. That'll clean up beautifully. The iron is a iron and chip breaker. Um, that's correct. We know we've got this slot in the back of We've got this slot in the back of the, um, the throat, and that is to take the head of the screw which holds the chip breaker. There's, if you've got a hand plane which is flat, like this one on the bottom, um, that's for just a single iron with no chip breaker. Another restored hand plane that we're using. So yeah, sometimes, People will chuck anything in there and uh, they'll put the, like just a single iron with no, and you know if it's got this cut out, you should have a chip breaker. Uh, the iron has got loads of life on it, nearly two inches to the, uh, to the tip, so that's quite good. A little bit rusty on the back there, but not a problem. Maker's mark, uh, which matches, which is the marples to the marples. A little bit of light rusting. This has actually, I suspect, been kept in a toolbox. Um, so yeah, really happy with the iron and the chip breaker. That's a very easy um, fix. If you did find one, 
you want as much obviously um, iron on the end as, as possible. When it starts to get far back here, the heat treatment is not as good either, so uh, watch out for, for that. The handle is fixed, it's in good, sturdy, it's not loose, it's, there's no broken bits. Sometimes the, the horn on the top of the, uh, the handle can get broken off if it's dropped and smashed, but that's all in good uh, thing. The only thing that is missing is the little button for the striking um, cap where you would hit it on the front. Um, so we'll turn a new one out of some beach to fit that in there. So looking down the throat, it's tidy. There's no swelling, there's no splits, there's no cracks or anything in the, the sides. And these parts here, the abutments, are in good shape, in good order, nice and square and clean around the edges. Um, sometimes you wang it in, the plane will get um, a little bit tight on the iron, which has got a good bit of lateral adjustment there for you know, you can you can skew the blade ever so slightly. Plenty of room on that. If it's too tight or the wrong iron's in there, these can sometimes uh, contract, bulge, and, and split out. So that's good. The abutments are square. That's obviously what holds the, the wedge tightly in. And when I put the iron in, just rest it under my fingers, I can follow that wedge, and I can see that as it goes in, it's going to fit the right angle. Sometimes the wedge is fitted to the the, uh, the plane and if the wedge angle is wrong it won't do its job because it's not sitting and resting down in the, the throat and onto the adjust the abutments there. Um, so that's all good, the wedge is all good and in good shape. The iron and the, um, the chip breaker, the throat the abutments, the cheeks on the side, they're all in good order. That's really, really handy. Um, and then finally on the bottom, I'm gonna look at the mouth. It's in good shape, there's no damage, there's no uh, splits, cracks, or anything like that in the timber. I suspect this has not had very much use. It has had some use. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this in the vise and just uh, by looking down at the sole of the plane, see if there is any twist in the sole. Um, it looks on camera like there might be this side here by my thumb it looks a little bit lower it looks like it might be going that way but when I actually physically eyeball it like there um, it actually looks it's really difficult to line the camera it looks pretty good going down there so I am quite happy I'll put it in the vise put a couple of pencils on it and check that over just as it was left maybe 60 years ago. I'm going to put this down as worthwhile. So although I'm not hugely surprised that these work, um, given that I know the history and I know where they came from and literally who they came from, um, I am pleasantly surprised at just how well they did work uh, in terms of the, the cutting edge on the iron. I'm gonna go with worth the effort on that one as well. Now, next stage, now I know that these actually work and they're worth, uh, they're worth restoring, um, for want of a better expression, is to strip them down, clean them up. Now, if you'd have bought these from an unknown source, you'd obviously go through all that 
that I've already described. I honestly didn't really need to do that with these because I know where they've come from. I'll take off all the areas, so there's this corner that's had a little knock, so I'll just cut those kind of splayed fibers, neaten up the end to strengthen it. And then wire wool and board linseed oil to clean off all the dirt and give the wood something to, uh, to feed on. This other one on the other hand, which is dirty. I mean, it's dirty to, you can feel that it's old and dirty. Um, you can feel the dirt on the, on the surface of the plane. Now, obviously it's got this. So I'm gonna have to try and be a bit careful of this little area here, because I don't want to take off the, the sticker. I think it will probably be all right. I'm not gonna rub it too hard around there. Right, I'm going to leave that to soak for a few hours just to soften up all the, the grime and dirt and then I'll come back and give it another another rub over with the wire wall. In the meantime, very, very important to uh, look after yourself, particularly when you're using boiled linseed oil and wire wool. So I'm just going to screw these up and leave them in a metal bucket in the sunlight. While that's soaking, concentrate on the irons and get these sharpened up. I'm going to turn a new little striking button out of some beach. Thank you. 